would you describe your job? I am an intensive care nurse in the NHS. People have a very old-fashioned opinion of what nursing is, but the nursing profession is one of the most rapid changing professions out there at the minute. It's not like it used to be. There's much more expected of you now. You're not there just to give medications and uh, and clean people, which is still part of the job. I said, but you've got so, like, but you've got so much more now. You have to be able to know your anatomy and physiology more in depth. You need to know what's going on. You need to pick up on problems before they escalate more. You're also the one that's with families when they've got devastating news. You're the one that has to support families through grieving processes, help family, like, as not as well as helping family, uh, patients, you also have to help their families as well. You have, to, you have to have your fingers in so many pies just to get through a day, really. The, the, on the OTI I work at, I have to say that, because there's always doctors on ITU and there's obviously, like, it's mostly, like, nurses, so there's, like, um, on like the wards where there's like two or three nurses a shift or maybe a bit more um, and like to you we nurse one to one or one to two a typical day he, the doctors come around on ward round in the morning with the consultants I've, I've got to say like from what experiencing like what it was like with doctors as a student on the ward with nurses um, ITU doctors tend to respect nurses opinions more because we spend the whole 12 and a half hours but that individual patient so we pick up on small changes that other people wouldn't notice because they're not in that bed space continuously monitoring that one patient. I've had it once where a consultant stuck up for me in front of one of his junior doctors because his junior doctor was trying to treat me like shit and wouldn't listen to what I had to say and what my concerns were and the consultant literally like gave him a verbal smack down in my bed space it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> He basically said that you need to listen to the nurses because he said you come round on ward round and then you go and sit at the desk. He said, but Melissa will stay there for the next 12 and a half hours watching this patient. So I think she knows the patient slightly better than you do. And it's very, it was very uncomfortable. I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay. On the wards, it was very different. When I was a student and I had to experience ward round and stuff, the doctors sometimes wouldn't even speak to the nurses. They'd do their ward round and then not even let them know what was going on really. I could go, and in, it sounds really bad, but I could go an entire week because there were so many patients that you would probably have like 12 patients in your caseload. I went an entire week once on the same like area. And even then I struggled to remember my patients' names. Like I couldn't really tell you a lot about them. That's why things get picked up slightly later on the wards because if you don't know what you're looking for, then things can be missed. But obviously on ITU, I'm looking at their obs constantly, so I can tell if something's going slightly off. My last year of my nurse training was obviously all skewed because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Because it was obviously the March time, so like our last six months of uni was all online. But then obviously there was that thing from the government where we basically got asked to enrol early to go and join the NHS workforce. So we weren't qualified nurses, but we were basically employed by the trust as extra members of staff while also trying to do our management placement, dissertations and everything else. And then just trying to find the motivation after like 37 and a half hour weeks or like after your 12 and a half hour shift to like do like work was just, was difficult. So we were the first cohort of nurses that started in 2017, September 2017 to not have the student bursary. Previously, before September 2017, basically the NHS funded the degree. So there was no student loan. You did you got paid not much, but I think some for like the work that you did within your own placement and stuff like that. We didn't have any pay really for working a full-time job. For, we basically worked a full-time job for free when we were on placement. It was a, it was a government decision to cut the bursary. I think the NHS is massively underfunded for the amount of demand, like the supply demand is completely stretched. If you just look at wait lists now post the pandemic, 
we've got less staff but more patients needing emergency surgeries they need to have their like cancer treatments and stuff like that at the minute the nhs is like spread quite thinly to try and support everybody but there's no one really there supporting the nhs i think the level of like responsibility you have as a nurse now as well is not reflected in the pay that we get and i can i know from a lot of people that i've worked with the slap in the face pay issues from the government have been really like quite damaging actually to the profession because the way that the government treats nursing and nursing pay that we don't actually do enough to warrant a pay rise exhaustion's a big thing i think post covid it's affected a lot of people um i think when you're exhausted like you're just you're kind of going to autopilot and i think it happened to a lot of us after the second wave of covid where we were having like four or five, three, to three, four or five like ventilated, sedated, really, really sick patients continuously in like, what was it, the three months of like the second wave. It was just, it was like non-stop. It was hard to get breaks because you were so busy with all your patients. You were in, you couldn't get a drink, you couldn't leave just the toilet. like. Like I remember going at least like one or two shifts where I only had like a half an hour break in 12 and a half hours. I didn't go to the toilet once in my entire shift. I didn't drink anything my entire shift. And I think after the, after the both waves of COVID, I think people were just exhausted. Like it was draining mentally, physically. You want, you, you want to care, but you just don't have the energy to care wholeheartedly. And that's when you just, you just kind of get on with it. So you yourself claim that the reason that you feel exhausted and overworked is because you can't help but take the work home with you. You're caring about your work to the point where you can't let it go. It's not something that ends when you finish your shift. It's something that you carry with you all the time. Do you feel that there need to be procedures put in place to prevent uh, caring fatigue or exhaustion? Well no, because the care does happen efficiently, like you have your takeover, the, the nurse takes over from you on the night shift and then so on so on. But is that enough? Yes, it's the system. Yes, it's the employer that need to be able to do something. But then you kind of have to prioritise yourself, but then you, but then it's hard. So there isn't really a clear answer to that. There are definitely flaws in the system. But at the minute, there's not a way around them. You kind of just have to go through it until things get better. Do you ever regret going into nursing? <laughs> um, when you have your really bad days or your bad weeks, there's sometimes you question why you chose this profession over any other job. Um, but then once you like reevaluate everything and you get out of the slump that you were in, um, then no, I don't regret it. I have my friends and family. Can I name you or not? Yeah. I have you. <laughs> I have Star. And that's what helps keep me like sane in times that are really tough. I can't say there's many people that can understand what you go through apart from the people you work with. And I've luckily found some really close friends who are probably who I hope will remain lifelong friends through this job so it definitely bonds you and I think if you'd looked at nursing like nursing relationships pre-pandemic on ITU you had your friends and stuff but like 
you had like but now everyone's a lot more close knit because you've been through such a such a trauma really. It was hard. Um and you had to work together whether you like the person or not. And that's definitely helped bring people closer together. What's your favourite part of your job? <laughs> Home time. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch time. <laughs>